Welcome to this online lecture of modern physics. We have been discussing the atomic models and what we have discussed is this briefly. Thomson's atomic model we discussed, which is a simple plum pudding model. Then to test that atomic model, Rutherford and his team performed an experiment, a scattering experiment with alpha particles, which are uh, scattered from gold foil. And we discussed the experimental uh, setup and the outcomes in detail. And the outcomes were such that it was clear, it was evident that Thomson's atomic model cannot be correct. And to account for the experimental results, the outcome of that experiment, uh, Rutherford himself proposed a model, atomic model. And as we saw, the model was good enough to explain the scattering formula that we saw in last lecture, in the previous lecture, but it wasn't without any drawbacks. There were two major drawbacks that we discussed. The first one was that if we consider this atomic model, Rutherford's atomic model, then we, what we will have is we have radiating atom, as we put it. What do I mean by radiating atom? Okay, let me quickly go through that. According to Rutherford's atomic model, what we have is we have a nucleus, which contains almost all the mass and all the positive charge. And then electron revolves in circular, cir uh, circular orbit about that nucleus. And when it revolves, it performs uniform circular motion. So its speed is constant. Velocity, however, is changing. Though the speed is constant, velocity is a vector which has magnitude and direction. Now for this electron, the magnitude of velocity is constant, but the direction continuously changes. Since it performs circular motion, it is not going in straight line. Its direction always changes. We, in fact, now you know that if it is performing circular motion, then its acceleration is given by V square by R, where V is magnitude of its velocity or speed of that electron and R the radius of that orbit. So this electron is performing uniform circular motion. It is accelerated charged particle. Now, whenever we have accelerated charged particle, uh, its velocity can be increasing, it can be decreasing, or it can be a situation like this, where magnitude of velocity is constant, but the direction is continuously changing. So whenever we have such kind of accelerated charged particles, According to Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, these charged particles emit radiations. Uh, why is the atom radiating? It is because according to this model, electron is accelerated and that accelerated charged particle now always emits electromagnetic energy, no matter whether that is positive charge, negative charge, as far as it is a charged particle and it is accelerated, it will continuously emit electromagnetic waves. Now, because of this, two things will happen. The first one is that there are radiations which should be observable around every atom. So when we observe an atom, we should be able to uh, able we should be able to detect these radiations which are emitted by that accelerated electron. And no radiations were observed. So according to the theory, there should be radiations which were which were not uh, observed experimentally and the second thing that happened the as a consequences of this radiating atom is since this electron is now continuously emitting electromagnetic wave it's in it is emitting energy its own kinetic energy will go on decreasing and when its kinetic energy decreases when magnitude of velocity decreases then what will happen is the radius of the orbit of that electron about the nucleus will also go on changing. It will go on decreasing. And as, in, uh, as a result, this electron will then follow this spiral path. Its radius will continuously go on decreasing. And eventually, it will fall into the nucleus. And therefore, what we have is an unstable atom. And if atoms were, un if atoms were unstable, we wouldn't exist. The nature would not be the way it is. That means the, the atoms are definitely not stable. Sorry, unstable. They are stable. And these were the two major drawbacks of the whole atomic model that we have discussed. Now, in this lecture, our plan is to discuss 
atomic spectra so we, why we are discussing atomic spectra is because when we observe atomic spectra this electromagnetic waves which were which we are observing through that spectrum are directly coming from they are emitted from an atom and therefore they carry information about what kind of energies electrons have when they are present inside the atom and therefore they are observing the spectrum can tell us a lot about what kind of energies uh, the electrons in the atom in the atoms have and therefore we will discuss uh, atomic spectra and these are the different uh, uh, related topics that we will discuss regarding this atomic spectra okay so let's begin by considering how to how is uh, a spectrum uh, obtained atom so what you see here is this part of the diagram is called as the discharge tube discharge tube uh, this discharge tube is made up of glass so the, it is made up of glass and what you see here is a notch which when this tube is fabricated is can be connected to a vacuum pump so this can be connected to a vacuum pump and vacuum can be created inside this discharge tube and now once the it is Uh, uh once the vacuum is created you can later fill this tube with any gas we will say uh it's a hydrogen gas so this tube is first uh, completely a vacuum is created inside this tube and then it is filled with hydrogen gas but when the hydrogen gas is filled in this inside this tube it is filled with very low pressure so it is rarefied gas which is filled inside this discharge tube why uh, why it should be rarefied we will come to that point but right now just keep in mind that the hydrogen gas which is filled in there in that discharge tube doesn't have many atoms which are present there it is rarefied it is with low pressure and therefore very small number of atoms are there inside that tube have you got got my point so far is everyone with me so far any questions any doubts now what is done is in in this discharge tube it is connected to a high voltage battery so what you see here is a dc power supply and a very high voltage can be applied across these two electrodes now now who can tell me why have i colored this electron uh, this electrode red this electrode is anode and by anode we mean that it is at positive higher potential so it has a positive sign and this is now cathode so it is at negative potential and now these anode and cathode are applied this dc voltage high tension dc voltage and because of that what will happen is when this potential difference is sufficiently high it will undergo uh, breakdown electric breakdown so there will be electric breakdown and in the process electrons are emitted from this cathode so these electrons are emitted and since there is high voltage there is this electro uh, electric breakdown these electrons will now accelerate towards the anode since anode is positively charged and cathode is negatively charged and charge on electron is negative they will be attracted towards the anode and therefore as they are attracted their uh, their velocity is will go on increasing and they will gain high velocity in the process of electric breakdown now is this gas tube uh, empty is there anything in the gas tube there is hydrogen gas and by hydrogen gas means what we expect is we expect that there are these hydrogen atoms present so what we have is hydrogen atoms now through hindsight we now know what kind of atomic structure has and therefore now uh, we can explain that what will happen what will happen is once in a while remember it is the discharge tube is filled with hydrogen gas but at the same time it is at very low pressure and therefore very small number of atoms of hydrogen are there inside that tube and therefore these electrons as they are accelerated as they are accelerating towards the anode what will happen is once in a while they will collide with the hydrogen atom and when they collide with the hydrogen atom their kinetic energy is transferred to that hydrogen atom and when that 
transfer takes place electron in the hydrogen atom will be excited to higher energy level and when they are excited to higher energy level can they stay there forever of course not they will eventually de excite and when they de excite when they are uh, they regain their ground uh, energy level what happens is they emit electromagnetic radiation so in the process as these electrons as the electric breakdown take pl takes place as the electrons are accelerated towards that anode what will happen is these hydrogen atoms will start emitting light they will start emitting light which is because of the de excitation of the electrons which are excited by the collision with the electrons which are accelerated inside this discharge tube so in the process what will happen is it will start emitting this hydrogen or discharge tube will start emitting electromagnetic waves now these electromagnetic waves are emitted by the atom and therefore they have the character a particular characteristics which depends on the atom from which they are emitted so this electromagnetic waves which are emitted from this discharge tube now has the information about what kind of electro uh, what kind of energies are there in hydrogen atom and in this way now what what should be your next step any uh, what do we what should we have here after uh, this emission of electromagnetic waves takes place what do we have when we obtain atomic spectra so what we have to do next is we have to measure the wavelength or wavelengths which are emitted by this hydrogen atom because the light which is emitted from the hydrogen gas or this discharge tube will not have only a single wavelength it is not monochromatic light it will be emitted with mixture of different wavelengths there will be mixture of different uh, uh, wavelengths and the light will be therefore not monochromatic light when we say monochromatic light light it has only one wavelength but now in this case what will happen is the light which is emitted will have multiple or different uh, different wavelengths in it and now what we have to do as you correctly have pointed out is we have to measure that wavelength which is emitted by the hydrogen atom let's see what we how do we do it what do you think this gray boxes are representing they are collimator we where did we have collimator before in which experimental in rutherford scattering experiment we had collimator and what does that do what it does is it was same uh, in that experiment also and here also when light is emitted by this discharge tube light is emitted in all the possible directions it doesn't have a specific direction and this collimator now blocks or blocks the light which is uh, traveling in different direction and allows only light beam which is traveling in one direction or it is a, uh, it is almost uh, traveling horizontally now so that is why we have to place collimator here what is this triangle representing what will that prism do is as i said when light is emitted in the discharge tube it is not monochromatic there are multiple wavelengths which are present in that uh, light emitted by the discharge tube and this prism due to uh, the way light is reflected or oh, sorry refracted it will different wavelengths now will be refracted at different angles and because of that this prism will now split light into li light beams of various wavelengths so when this beam comes out of the prism it has now it is now a monochromatic light there is when I, i consider this particular beam it is it has only one wavelength present in it similarly this has now only one wavelength present in it now in the diagram i have shown only two rays in reality the number of waves or number of wavelengths which are present in that light which is emitted by the discharge tube will be present here so if there are 10 different wavelengths then there will be 10 rays that you will obtain once uh, the light comes out of the prism and what you do is or what you know is if i consider this straight line if this prism wasn't there what would happen is light will travel in a straight line that white light would travel in the straight line since the prism is present now different waves or different wavelengths now are deviated at different angles and there is well defined relationship between the angle at which these light beams are emitted and their wavelengths so 
there is a well defined relationship or rather it should be theta of lambda so this theta will now depend on lambda each unique wavelength will have unique angle at which the light is reflected and therefore light is roughly what we say is the light is, uh, is split into different colors right so and then what you do is you either observe it through uh, eyepiece by taking a telescope or what you do is you simply place a, a, a plate there photonegative plate and then you can obtain the lights which are present there now you can observe this is black when there is when when it is not exposed to any light but when some part of that film is exposed to light give it a different color either if it is color film it there will be color or it will become white similar so wherever these uh, electromagnetic wave fall on this film it will leave an impression there and now because of this relation between theta and lambda you can calculate at what angle the particular beam or particular uh, light ray has been deviated and from that angle you can find out what is the wavelength of that light and in this way you can guess what are the wave uh, what are the wavelengths which are present in the light which is emitted by that discharge tube is is it clear is the concept of uh, obtaining atomic spectrum clear how we can do it we can either put a film and then record that radiations or we can uh, observe it in the laboratory manually okay what i have done is i have uh, opened the chat window i won't close it now if you have when these kind of questions comes you can simply uh, type yes and no so this this is this is how you can obtain atomic spectrum and this is very important every element has unique spectrum so if it is hydrogen ele ele uh, it is light obtained by hydrogen discharge then these light will have characteristic to that hydrogen atom and every element suppose you feel in a, some different gas the light which is emitted by a discharge tube by the by the different element is different than hydrogen. every element has unique spectrum and from that unique spectrum now you can guess what is the element which is emitting that particular light and now what you see here is discrete spectrum what do i mean by discrete is there are only certain elements which are present in the light if this was a film which is exposed to light emitted by say some discharge tube or by any uh, spectroscopic readings then what you observe here is these regions these wavelengths are there in the light which is emitted by the particular source so if if this was a spectrum obtained for a particular element then how many wavelengths are emitted by that these six colored lines here the particular element is emitting these six wavelength and from the formula by observing in through the experimentation you can now guess what are the wavelengths which are emitted by that element so in this way this is called if you have this kind of spectrum then it is called as discrete spectrum why discrete because not all wavelengths are present only certain wavelengths these six wavelengths are present there if all wavelengths are present what would happen how would this film look like it will look like a rainbow right correct so it won't there won't be any black uh, regions left because the whole film is exposed to light since all the wavelengths are present the light every region of this film will be exposed to some wavelength some light and therefore this this the uh, there will be no black regions which are visible now since this light has only certain wavelengths it, there is so much of black regions if it was a continuous uh, spectrum the, if all the wavelengths were present in that light then it would look like a rainbow there would not be any black plate patches okay one more thing suppose i am observing only visible light which our eyes can detect what do you think uh, roughly not exactly what what is going to be the wavelength of this region this first part it is uh, yes 750 newton uh, newton sorry 750 nanometers let me write 7000 angstrom unit instead of considering that five you are correct you are not wrong so we are talking roughly 
uh, of the range i'll say it is 7000 angstrom where a one angstrom unit is 10 to the power minus 10 meter 10 or if you want to write it in terms of nanometers then it will be 700 nanometer where 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power minus 9 meter okay and what is this part what is going to be wavelength of this side shall i say 4000 angstrom unit is it fine so roughly this is the visible range or wavelengths which our eyes can detect okay now this is a discrete spectrum uh, i explained why it is called as discrete spectrum and as we, as i said on the previous slide that every element has unique spectrum if I, if i consider a spectra of different elements what will happen is these spectral lines now will be at different positions different lines they will, all of them will have different wavelengths the reason is now clear to us it is because the, the only those energy levels which are allowed will emit light of that wavelength and therefore there will be only certain wavelengths presented by that element and in this way every element is going to have a unique spectrum and from that spectrum of light we can guess what are the elements which are present uh, which is emitting that light okay so this is about the discrete spectrum now th there could be we can perform a different kind of experiment this red sphere that you see here is basically hot gas and it is not rarefied gas as we uh, considered in case of discharge tube it is a dense gas which is a, which is at very high temperature and therefore when it is at high temperature it will start emitting light though we are saying it is hot gas if it is pure do you know any sphere which have which is made up of such hot gas can you think of a sphere which has uh, hot gas and it is emitting light we have the sun our sun is sorry stars any star if we consider it is very close to it there is fusion going on uh, in the stars and therefore it will emit light therefore that is the reason behind the high temperature and there is gas everything is in plasma state everything is colliding with each other because of high temperature all these atoms are undergoing collisions with each other there are electrons which are in excited state there is this plasma and what happens when we have such hot gases it emits spectrum but unlike spectrum emitted by the elements now spectrum which is emitted by such dense hot gas is not discrete spectrum it is continuous spectrum someone just said that we would get a rainbow if all the wavelengths were present and that is exactly what happens so far i am not saying that this is sun okay because when we have sun something there is something else because of which we get a different spectrum it is continuous spectrum but there is light change that we get in that spectrum we will come to that point. so when we have hot dense gas at high temperature and there is high density uh, atoms and electrons are accelerated they are undergoing collision so there is all kind of chaos there uh, light is emitted and re emit absorbed and re emitted by some other atom and this process when takes place what happens is it is now not characteristics of individual element in it what will happen is it will have all the wavelengths and it is now it has information about the whole body which is called as the black body radiation curve we will consider that when we discuss third chapter or second chapter right now just keep in mind that a hot dense gas it emits a continuous spectrum and that spectrum now has nothing to do with what is the chemical composition of that gas that hot gas it is property of the temperature of that gas it depends solely on the what is the temperature of that gas and and this continuous spectrum is something which can be observed with the sun therefore we can see the rainbow there there are not only certain wavelength present all the wavelengths starting from that roughly 7000 angstrom unit to 4000 angstrom unit are there in that light something uh, there is as i said there is light change when it comes to sun we'll come to that point before that can you spot any error in the image that you see on the screen order of the color is different it in fact it is completely inversed 
what happens when light is emitted is this light which has high wavelengths are emitted by an angle which is less as compared to angle at which uh, lower wavelengths uh, uh, deviated so light with high wavelengths are deviated less and therefore what we should have is we should have red color closer to this direct uh, path if this prism wasn't there light would come directly here but because of the prism now light is being deviated as i said light with high wavelength or uh, electromagnetic waves with high wavelength will be deviated less and therefore they will be closer to this direct path as you go on increasing the wavelength sorry as you go on decreasing the wavelength the angle of deviation will go on increasing and in the visible light roughly uh, which is the last color right it is violet color so so this violet color we will observe at the far end of the spectrum because uh, violet has the lowest wavelength in visible light it will be deviated by large angle so that is exactly what I, what is reversed in this case what has what is shown here is that light with red wavelength is deviated by larger angle as compared to this blue and violet color okay that is you uh, correctly spotted the error in this image so let's now move on now we want to consider absorption spectrum are the concepts of discrete spectrum and continuous spectrum clear when will we get a discrete spectrum so whenever light is emitted by atoms when the light is coming from atoms and there is no other process which is causing that light then we have a discrete spectrum any light which is coming from atoms will have a discrete spectrum and the reason is clear to us now there are only certain energy levels allowed and therefore uh, light coming from atoms always is discrete on the other hand when we have hot gases where light is absorbed emitted re, uh, re emitted and absorbed and uh, it undergoes different scattering with uh, electrons different charged particles there are charged particles which are accelerating so whenever we have this kind of chaotic situation where we have uh, a dense body at high temperature then we get a continuous curve now let's go on to absorption spectrum now what i am showing here is this central part is the same hot dense gas that we have so this hot dense gas without this cover of the gray cover that you see it would give a continuous spectrum right what is this gray shade around that hot gas is it is some gas which is at cooler temperature which is at lesser temperature as compared to this dense gas so it is a cooler gas cooler as compared to temperature of this hot gas is this clear uh, this is exactly what we have in the sun we have the core which is at high temperature where the fusion is going on and therefore the temperature is very high there as we come to outer layers of the sun the most outer there is atmosphere of the sun which is at much lesser temperature as compared to the surface and the core of the sun this is a situation which we have with sun now what will happen is light is emitted by this hot dense gas and that light which is emitted gives us a continuous spectrum but now this cooler gas has atoms the cooler atmosphere of the sun let me say has atoms and these atoms now will absorb the light which is coming from that hot dense gas if if the whole a uh, spectrum which has all the colors is standing let's say in this direction and now what happens is it encounters some atom and only certain electromagnetic waves are absorbed by that atom and it is re-emitted in the process of de excitation so, so suppose we have this light which contains all the wavelengths which is present inside that star now it is suppose absorbed by one of the atoms in this cooler gas this atom will be excited depending on what is the energy level and what light it can absorb it will be excited and that particular wavelength when is re-emitted by that atom will be emitted in all the possible directions so suppose we are talking about a particular gas say uh, helium or hydrogen atom then what will happen is 
uh, this helium will be uh, this helium atom will be excited for a particular wavelength and that wavelength when is when is re-emitted by this helium will be scattered in all the possible directions and therefore this light if you observe it will have less amount of that particular wavelength what is the reason because if 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 this atom wasn't there all of it would have come to the observer in this direction but now since helium has absorbed and emitted it it has scattered that light that particular wavelength is present in less uh, it is present with less intensity in this light and because of that what you observe is these lines these dark lines you have a continuous spectrum if this gray cooler gas or the gas which is surrounding that hot dense gas was there you would observe a continuous rainbow all this all the wavelengths would have been there but now due to this presence of this cooler gas due to the presence of elements in the cooler cool, uh, this cooler gas uh, certain wavelengths are scattered by the atoms and therefore you will observe dark spectral lines for the wavelengths which are being rescattered by that atom or those atoms which are present in the gas is this concept clear so I, I don't actually it is it is not depicting the correct picture it is not completely dark what happens is its intensity suddenly drops if that element is there which absorbs certain wavelength then that particular wavelength is present in less intensity in the light which is observed by for that particular source and therefore it is not completely dark but what you observe is something like this so here i have tried to show these spectral lines are now not completely dark they are not, it is not black so not all the light is gone for that particular wavelength that particular wavelength is only with less intensity and therefore as compared to the surrounding background it will be less brighter so in this way suppose you find out the wavelengths of these lines then you can guess what are, what is the chemical co composition in the cooler gas remember that okay so this is absorption spectrum why it is called absorption because atoms are now absorbing the light and they are emitting it in different direction and therefore this spectrum is called as absorption spectrum because light is absorbed and that particular absorbed wavelength now is present in less intensity in this continuous spectrum against the emission spectrum which is obtained due to emission of light from the atom so in this case these uh, lines with these spectral lines with lesser intensity are there because of the absorption of that particular wavelength by the atoms whereas in this case they are present because emission of uh, light from that particular for, for for that particular atom is it fine so is this concept of uh, is this concept clear there are four kinds of spectrum that we discussed first one is discrete spectrum which is at which is obtained when we have uh, when we when the light is emitted by atoms then when we have dense hot gas we observe the spectrum coming from that gas then all wavelengths are present and therefore it is a continuous spectrum then in situations like this when atoms absorb certain wavelength from continuous spectrum and they scatter that wavelength then we get uh, less intensity for the, those wavelength and therefore it, since the light is being absorbed by the atom energy is being absorbed by the atom it is called as absorption spectrum against the spectrum which is obtained due to emission I, emission of light from the light okay so these are four different kind of spectrum now we discussed now fraunhofer lines are nothing but these spectral lines with lesser intensity these lines are present if we observe uh, light coming from the sun then we of course uh, observing these spectral these dark or uh, lines with lesser intensity from the sunlight is not possible through uh, bare eye bare eyes we cannot but however if we obtain spectrum of sunlight in the laboratory then you can observe that certain wavelengths are present in less intensity and these particular wavelengths at those regions where you would have those wavelengths are less bright as compared to the background and therefore you can guess the wavelengths which are gone from that particular light and why is it happening when it when 
when you observe the spectrum for the sun then these lines are called as fraunhofer lines so this is for the sun okay when we observe the spectrum of the sun then these lines which are the uh, absorption lines then it, they are called as fraunhofer lines and why are they important why do you think they are important all right so why these fraunhofer lines are important is because they will tell us about the chemical composition of the atmosphere of the sun because sun's atmosphere is the cooler gas which is causing these absorption lines so these are basically the absorption lines and since they are caused because of the cooler gases in the sun's atmosphere they can tell us they can give us information about the chemical composition of the sun's atmosphere 